Hi again then guys and welcome to yet another car review of course from the 1.40 selection of the five vehicles that we have to work with this time and this one is of the five cars the one that I said the most times in beards and cars predictions episodes and various other videos on the channel for over a year probably now this was one of my predictions for them to bring back in GT Sport because it's an icon it's a great choice for what it is. It was already a premium, so of course, there's so many things going for it. Why would you not bring it back? It's not like the Chevelle, which I actually personally prefer. I love the Chevelle. The SS454 is a beast, but it wasn't a premium. It's not necessarily as popular as the Camaro or the Camaro, as Americans will call it in the game. But Camaro is what I'm going to call it, so whatever. Now, as far as this car goes, what does it have to offer? Because for a start, it's a six-figure vehicle. That's pretty expensive for a muscle car. Yes, I said muscle car. Because although a lot of people will say pony car, I really couldn't care less. Because any game that features a car like this will put it in, guess what? Muscle car events. Because that is exactly what all games put Camaros up against, Mustangs up against, they'll even put a 1959 Cadillac Buretz in a muscle car race, and of course that isn't a muscle car, and yet you don't see me complaining about that, and I'm a huge fan of it. Or the Lincoln Continental, which also is not a muscle car, but still gets dumped in with it in games like Forza, Test Drive Unlimited, when they have muscle cars and pony cars, they always put them together. So you can argue all day long whether it's a pony car or a muscle car, nobody cares, and more importantly, the game doesn't care. You can use it in muscle car events. Get over it. Now, as far as what this car has to offer, it's a 4.9 litre, so pretty small by muscle car standards. It's putting out 289 horsepower, which again is pretty modest, especially for the late 60s. There were a lot of much bigger dogs out there. Again, the Chevelle is a perfect example. Of course, the 440 Charger, the Super B, a number of other muscle cars that were in the past of Gran Turismo. Even other Camaros have more power than that. Of course, my personal favourite classic Camaro, the 69 ZL1, which is an absolute monster, well over 500 horsepower. Even that has way, way more horsepower than this does, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because, of course, with the way that Gran Turismo Sport's tuning system works, because you cannot necessarily fit and remove parts in a general sense, you just have that percentage slider to work with, with the option to increase or decrease power to some degree. But because of how that system works, it's actually more relevant to have a car that's like the mid-level in terms of power, like 300 or so, because then you have so much range. You can take it down to N200, you can take it up to N500, sometimes higher, and in the case of this car, you can even take it higher than that to N600, with just under 600 brake horsepower. Now the weight on this one is something which I've always championed, it's a very very good car for weight, 1415 kilos stock, that's really good, that's easily two or three hundred kilos lighter than a lot of the really big muscle cars like the Charger, and you can make it significantly lighter, like not much more than 1200 kilos, which is actually lighter than something like a GT3 car, as an example. And again, for a 69 American Classic, that's pretty good. It's pretty good, even with less than 300 horsepower. Now, the horsepower per ton in its stock form is actually 204. That's pretty healthy. That's higher than quite a few hot hatches, even modern ones. So again, very healthy numbers, thanks to in particular that low weight. Of course, it's rear wheel drive. It's from the 60s, so it's a proper American classic, not a very neutered 70s engine, of course, with the fuel crisis. Now you can put this up against stuff like the Trans Am in the game if you want to. Personally, I would say it's a little bit too good for that. The Trans Am kind of suffers because of that lack of power, especially in comparison to how, to how big the engine is. This one, though, is a brilliant all-rounder. It's a great choice of muscle car, pony car, whatever you want to call it, American classic, but it's also a brilliant track car. And that's something which this Camaro has always had in its favor in, as far as I can remember, every Gran Turismo game that's featured it, because it's compact by muscle standards, it's a lot lighter than a lot of other muscle cars, it's narrower, shorter, it has a really low center of gravity compared to a lot of them, and it doesn't have that distinctive boat-like handling that many of them do, which is a huge advantage to have. And in fact, in many ways, it handles more like what you'd expect from like a Corvette of the time. 
which of course back then a Corvette was nothing like what it is now, but even so, the Corvette was a big deal way back in the 50s and 60s, so for this to handle in a relatively similar way to something like that, a pure sports car, it shows the kind of capabilities that this Camaro has. If you haven't tried the Camaro yet, as I said it is a six figure car, but hey, in Gran Turismo it doesn't take that long to get it, and I would say it's worth a hundred grand, because it's an icon, it's a great collector's piece, it's a great canvas to build liveries or to paint liveries on. You can make yourself a little drag car, a drift car, a circuit car, a sprint car, even a rally car. It's a great base to work with and a pretty pleasant looking vehicle. I don't know of anyone who really dislikes the look of the Camaro. There's nothing about it to really dislike. It's a fairly neutral shape. So overall, that's it for my thoughts on the Z28. I'm glad that they finally brought it to the game. I will say I'm surprised they chose the Z28 over the SS, considering that the Camaro SS is kind of the more iconic one, or at least from what I've seen in games. But sure, I like the choice of the Z28. Of course, the ZL1 would have been nice. <laughs> but again, the Z28 was a good choice. So that's it for my thoughts. Of course, I'd love to hear yours down below. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.